Roy Jones and Bernard Hopkins first crossed their paths on May 22, 1993. It was raining. The stadium in Washington was visited by only 8,500 people, much less than the 45,000 seat capacity of the arena. The main event of the evening did not catch the interest of the American public. The dominant heavyweight champion, Riddick Bowe, defended his titles against a fighter who was not in the top 15 world rankings, Jesse Ferguson. Rock Newman, Bo's manager, did his best. Manager and boxer appeared in the ring before an unhappy crowd. On the undercard in the title fight, two American fighters boxed. Both brought with them their own skeletons in the closet. On the one hand, a ring wizard, talented, a spoiled child of fate a victim of soul refereeing and his own management, a good boy, Roy Jones Jr. On the other hand, a brutal, cruel former felon, but without superstar skills, a bad guy, Bernard Hopkins. James Tony had left the IBF middleweight title and rose to second middleweight, where he severely beat Iran Barkley. The first and second number of the rating, Bernard and Roy, played for the vacant belt. Their paths crossed. But how different were their journeys to this first title fight? In 1978, the 13-year-old Bernard was living on the streets. Hopkins' mother and father were alcoholics, and their little son indulged in marijuana, drank cheap whiskey, and was no stranger to the knife. Around the same time, Roy Jones Sr. blew the dust from his adorable nine-year-old son. Roy's childhood was surrounded by many sports under the eye of a harsh but loving father, giving him all the right conditions for boxing. But what happened ten years later? It was 1998. 19-year-old Roy Jones, with a displeased look, stood on the Olympic pedestal in Seoul, Korea. He was brazenly robbed of a victory by the judges in the final match of the tournament against local boxer Park Si Hung. The cameras were facing him. The whole world is looking at him. He is a star. Meanwhile, the 23-year-old Bernard was freshly released from prison. Hopkins had just rewound four and a half years of imprisonment. He has colorful memories about how he was sick of egg powder and starch, how he exchanged cigarettes for peanut butter, drank a lot of water to drown out his hunger, and protected himself in the showers. Behind the prison walls, Bernard redefined his life principles. He started boxing to protect himself, while Roy always pursued only sports goals. Fighter and Boxer the atmosphere of their childhood and youth affects the formation of an adult. The nature of a person and his ability to compete in the world around him depend on the environment where the initial years of life had passed. Roy had everything. Bernard had nothing. Jones's career was his father. His dad very carefully promoted his son, organizing the fights with obviously weaker rivals. This is acceptable at the initial stage of a career. However, time passed and Roy's level of opposition left much to be desired. Only in 1993, four years after starting in the professional ring, did he begin gaining momentum and reach the second line of the unpopular organization of the IBF. Hopkins was different. In his debut fight in the professional ring, he went against the state champion among amateur boxers light heavyweight Clinton Mitchell. The opponent was more experienced and larger. Bernard lost. He received a fee of $350, while Jones earned $50,000 for his debut match. Hopkins realized that quality training and a competent approach to the training process are necessary. After one and a half years of tireless work, he returned to the ring. This was another fighter who had already become half a boxer. Bernard studied along the way. Roy had fun and played with his mediocre rivals. If Hopkins and Jones were destined to only one fight, then a victory by the executioner would be the logical result of this story. However, in life, everything happens differently. The difference in the class of fighters was too great. 
It is impossible in four years to gain a lifetime of experience. Boxing is an art. Since childhood, the fundamental foundations of fist fighting had been laid in Roy. All this, multiplied by his talent, made Jones an invincible fighter. He waited a long time for the title chance. In battle, he surpassed Bernard in speed. Hundreds of fights in the amateur ring were a huge experience, and it had its effects. Jones boxed with one left hand as he broke his right hand three weeks before the championship match. There's another left to go to deal with. Jones with the right hand. The body punches. The two more, but you notice uh, the escape from the ropes. Just unbelievable, just all natural talent. Hopkins fighting back in the middle of the ring. And Hopkins threw some nice counter punches, short punches to the head. After Jones flurry to the body. There's Jones to get out of the way at the same time he's throwing the punch. Makes it work, Gil. Or does Hopkins have a terrific chin, Gil? No, I, I think it's a question that he hasn't hit uh, Hopkins without any that. That's natural talent. And eventually Hopkins stepped away. Right cross lands solidly on Hopkins' chin. And Bernard, once again, doesn't move. Boxer are in those games, trying to win his first world championship. The vacant IBF middleweight title. You can just see the good solid profession. Salute the excitement potential for our big heavyweight championship fight upcoming. The crowd has retained all of its potential enthusiasm. The good boy defeated the bad. Bernard gave a good fight, but his skills and style were not at the level to overcome the phenomenon of Pensacola. All three judges delivered a verdict in favor of Roy, 116 to 112. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards, and all three judges, Lynn Carter, Eugene Grant, and Aldo, scored the bout 116 to 112 for the winner by unanimous decision. And now, the IBF middleweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Then for 17 long years, Bernard waited for the opportunity to avenge this defeat. He perceived this as a lifelong revenge. Both fighters went on their way. Both were at the top of their pound-for-pound -pound ranking. Several times they were close to a rematch, but each time circumstances arose that prevented a second battle. Their paths did intersect again, this time on April 3, 2010. Negotiations began long before the event. This time everything was done for Bernard. The promotion company, Golden Boy, set about organizing a massive rematch of the two veterans. Both were supposed to conduct an intermediate fight in December 2009. Bernard defeated Enrique Ornelas, and Roy lost with a fierce knockout in the first round to Australian puncher Danny Green. Defeated, Jones almost put an end to the upcoming second fight with Hopkins. The executioner was not deterred by the loss of his principled opponent. He had a goal, and he wanted revenge. It's Easter weekend, so I'm trying to, you know, be patriotic about it. You know, you've been running like a rabbit for 17 years, so I think he'll sleep with this the night after the fight in his bed. No, 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 it looks better near you. No. Nonetheless, pictures are taken, that's good. Here's some chickens. Keep it, it is what it is. I want the best for Jones Jr. because I don't want y'all to write that I was a bully Saturday night. Because I would knock this guy out and it's going to be up to Murkison whether he live or die. I gotta be generous to bring in this basket too. Be it Ruiz or Tarver or Glenn Johnson. 
He finds a way. He takes his time. He, he breaks his man down. Doesn't wait. The first two rounds. Yeah, but what ha what's happening again? Roy comes in as to the outcome of this fight against Roy Jones, where he has Junior to the ropes or, or, or to his corner. A guy who works his body, slows, brings those hands down. to every move, every feint that Hopkins gives him. It's a place on that chessboard. Back. But as I got older and kept making those comebacks, I was concerned. His lingering doubts can grow bigger. And now the pace picked up by Bernard. Bernard Hopkins is. I mean, when, when, he, when he first turned pro and leading into their first fight, he was known as a good right-handed puncher. It was an incredibly emotional and dirty fight. After the midpoint, the fight turned into a real nightmare. Hits on the back of the head from Jones, points scored, actions after the stop command, strikes to the groin, dissection, endless clinching, and bravado. for so long. Uh-oh. Now it's Roy Jones' turn for a little theatrics. <laughs> He's saying he was headbutted. Hopkins won by unanimous decision. 118 to 109 and 117 to 110 twice. All to the winner by unanimous decision from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins. Jones clearly surprised many of the experts writing off his accounts by expressing his respect for Hopkins. A revenge, 17 years in the making. Jones was right. Hopkins got what he wanted. Is it worth accumulating anger and living for revenge? The question is rhetorical. For some, this will become an incentive for existence. But for some others, it's a path to avoid. For such great athletes as Roy and Bernard, material goals have long faded into the background. They covered the initial needs for food, money, and recognition. They needed higher goals. The desire to achieve them retains the desire to live and develop. For Hopkins, the goal was a rematch with Jones. Roy, like no other, understood his colleague. His interview after the battle confirmed this. He got what he wanted. These words say a lot. Subtle psychology of two boxing geniuses, rivals in the ring, fighters with a different fate in history, who understood each other better than the closest people. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please press the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for new episodes about the great legends of the past.